What's up guys, welcome back. If you haven't seen the last video where we put together a fuse slash relay panel for Ms. Parker, make sure to go check that out. And if you have already seen it, here is the revised version of said fuse slash relay panel. So at the end of the last video, we connected our circuit breaker to our starter solenoid and our starter solenoid to our fuse box uh, using some spare cable that I just had laying around. And it was just too stiff, so the connections were very sloppy and they just didn't look professional. The connection from the circuit breaker to the starter solenoid, I had to like actually spiral the cable just for it to reach both posts um, without applying too much pressure on the posts or the connections and I know I said I was cool with it in the last video but the more I looked at it I just really wasn't cool with it so I ordered some more flexible cable that was much easier to work with and as you guys can see it looks way better now so yeah I'm much happier with the way that it turned out now and today we are going to continue to do a little bit more wiring on the car previously the power cable just came out of the battery box, ran up on the inside of the car all the way to the inside of the driver's side fender where it connected to our starter solenoid. But now our starter solenoid is on our fuse slash relay panel and that's going to be mounted somewhere behind the dash in front of the passenger seat. So we have to reroute the power cable and you know I figured now is as good a time as any to wire in a kill switch. So I went ahead and got a kill switch mounted onto the rear tail light it's all dry rotted and cracked so I figured you know it's the perfect candidate to drill into and put a kill switch on so yeah and I'm really happy with the way it turned out it looks super clean the only thing that's not perfect about the kill switch installation is if you look at the position of the switch right now it kind of just looks like it's in the middle but that's actually the off position the switch uh, doesn't have much throw to it so if I wanted it to be 100% even between on and off when I flip it on and off it would just barely be touching uh, the edge of off and on so now when we turn it on you could tell that it's 100% on on uh, whereas if I had it even between the two it would just barely be on the edge of the O and I don't know I think it looks way better like that and my thought process behind that was if we were ever in a situation where someone had to run up to the back of the car to flip the switch, it would be easy to visually comprehend that the switch was on and that you have to flick it to the left uh, to shut the car off. You know, no one's going to be like, oh, well, it didn't go all the way to off. When they flip the switch, it will do what it's intended to and shut the car off. So, yeah, I just I would just rather have it, uh, you know, completely on the on when it's on so I mean that's how it's gonna look while the car is running and then hopefully we never have to use it but if we did someone will just know that they have to flick it off so I'm not worried that it doesn't go all the way to off I think it looks pretty clean and then if we back up a little bit I mean I think that looks pretty good and I didn't want to push it over to the left anymore because I was keeping in mind that we are eventually going to have a parachute and I didn't want the parachute to block uh, your line of vision to the kill switch if someone was running up to the back of the car so yeah today the plan is to get the kill switch wired in and the first thing we need to do is get the power cable all pulled back into the hatch uh, then we have to take some measurements to the back of the kill switch cut the cable attach a lug to it attach that to the kill switch and then we are going to be running an entirely separate cable from the kill switch all the way up to the front uh, to where the alternator is at and then on the other post of the kill switch, we are going to be connecting whatever wire we have left from this uh, power cable. And then that is going to run up to the front behind the dash um, on the passenger side where the starter solenoid will be mounted eventually. So, yeah. All of the cables are now cut to length and I put lugs and heat shrink on the ends of them. So, all we have to do now is get them attached to the kill switch. So here we go. This is going to be our new alternator cable. Not gonna lie to you guys, 
I love the look of the kill switch on the tail light, but it is very tight back here to uh, get everything wired in and to work on it. Patience is key, I guess. All right, so that's that side. We're obviously going to still have to tighten that up. And then for the other post that's going to run to the starter solenoid, I think we got it boys. Everything looks good, nothing is touching. Perfect. Give you guys a closer look at that. So now the kill switch is officially wired up. We still have to tighten the nuts, uh, you know, that hold the cables into place, but I don't want to tighten that yet or do any type of final uh, routing of the cables until we have them connected at the front to the uh, fuse slash relay panel once we have them connected at the front then I will you know zip tie the cables together so these two will run together and I'll make it look super clean and I'm planning on running it just on uh, you know the right side of the passenger seat up to the front and then up to behind the dash to the fuse slash relay panel so yeah i'll clean all of that up uh once we have them finalized and uh, attached to the fuse slash relay panel up in the front under the dash but you guys can kind of see how they're running right there and the cable that you see going through the firewall is actually the alternator cable which i have already uh, connected to the alternator so just to make sure that we had the proper amount of length on the cable so yeah we are looking good boys all right guys the long awaited new engine management from his parker is finally here it's been a long time coming i've seen you guys in the comments like you need an ecu you need an ecu pretty much ever since we installed the turbo kit and uh yeah a few months ago i finally sent it and i could tell from the comment section the majority of you guys know that we went ahead and bought a holly terminator x for miss parker and i could not be more stoked i actually ordered it like two and a half months ago and it just came in a few days ago so it's still sealed up and today we're gonna be opening it up and checking it out. So let's get into it. I'm telling you, I'm pretty patient because I've had it now for at least three days and I just withhold my urges to open it so that way I can open it on camera with you guys. All right, here we go. Right off the bat, we got the beautiful harness. Man, I am so stoked. Everything's labeled, so should make installation pretty simple. And it just looks so good compared to the old harness that's just all wrapped up with 30 years of electrical tape. All right, we got some sensors. Some more harness. Some more harness. Ooh, this is a good one here. I think this is the three inch little touch screen. Yep, that, that is what it is. So check it out. Dang, that's cool. I didn't know it came with like a little cover and everything. Oh man, fire me up.
All right, what else we got in here? We have a new O2 sensor. I think this is for our inputs and outputs. If we wanted to wire any of that in, I believe, I'm not 100%. Some more harness. Mm, this looks like something for vacuum. Another sensor. Oh, sweet. Here is the bracket to mount the ECU underneath the passenger seat. We got uh, some paperwork in there, a Holly Terminator X sticker, and in this box we should have the actual ECU. Let's go. Look at that. We're blurry. Focus, focus. Guys, this thing is pretty. Oh my goodness. I got everything laid out so you guys can get a better idea of what all comes in the box. And man, I am fired up right now. The ECU is so nice. Everything is really nice. Like the wire loom looks so good the little three inch screen or three and a half inch i'm not i don't remember 100 percent what it is i think it's a three and a half inch touch screen super cool the bracket is nice like i guess that's why you pay what you pay because it's just you know top quality stuff here let's go i also picked up a little dell laptop so whenever we get the terminator x installed in the car we could plug it into the laptop, fire up the program, and start to learn how to tune ourselves, which I'm a little bit nervous about, but I'm more excited than nervous. And my whole thought process behind that was, you know, if we ever have any sort of issue with the tune, I do not want to have to rely on somebody else to get the car back up and running. I would much rather be able to plug the car in ourselves and at least attempt to fix whatever's going on by ourselves. You know, the main goal out here is to be self-efficient when it comes to all things race car. And yeah, so I'm stoked on that. I'm super pumped on the whole Terminator X kit. Everything is very nice. Give you guys one last look at it all. The little touch screen is too fire. The ECU is very nice. And I also ordered a couple other Holly goodies to go along with the Terminator X, and I'm not gonna tell you guys what that is just yet. You're gonna have to stay tuned to the future videos, but I will say it goes hand in hand with the Terminator X, and it's gonna look super rad inside the car, so you guys can pretty much guess what that is. And yeah, we do have quite a few things that we need to do to the car still before we can start installing the Terminator X, but you know, little by little, we'll get it knocked out, and before you know it, Miss Parker will be up and running again. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to hit the like button for me, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Be easy.